We're into week two of a four-week preaching series that I've called, Will You Respond? Will You Respond? And the gospel today started out with this very first verse. Jesus told the disciples a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. Last week, I spoke about gratitude as a foundational discipline of the Christian spiritual life. And I emphasized the acronym HELP, H-E-L-P. Gratitude helps us heal. Gratitude helps us evangelize. Gratitude helps us love our neighbor. Gratitude helps us bring praise of thanksgiving to God. And I asked, I concluded that brief homily with this question for you. Will you respond with grateful hearts? The world has gone off its rocker. If we spend even a little time each day in silence, in prayer, thanking God for something we are grateful for, our hearts will begin to soften, our hearts will begin to heal, our hearts will begin to change. Today, Jesus teaches about perseverance in prayer. I'm just going to say this succinctly. The church is grounded in prayer, full stop. Pope Francis said this morning, Denise was telling me out front, that Pope Francis referred to prayer as medicine of the church. Indeed, prayer is the seat of faith. Prayer is the seat of hope. Prayer is the seat of love. Prayer is also the seat of all Christian action. So when we think of this, where we are in today's world, where we are as a prayer parish, when we think about the disciplines of gratitude, the disciplines of prayer, what action in prayer might we rally around? What actions in prayer might God be calling us to? So let me just try to tease out a couple here. I believe God is calling us to a deeper understanding of unity. Unity in the Eucharist. We are one with everyone who is gathered around the altar today. This is an expression of the unity of the parish in that we gather around the altar to thank God for all God provided through Jesus. We are also one with the universal church. We are one with all who have gone before us as well. Disunity will destroy us. So my question to you is, what action might you take this week, this month, this year? What action might you take toward unity in helping us achieve our vision as a parish of being a beacon of hope and love grounded in the truth the beauty and the goodness of what Jesus has given us. How will you work toward unity in our parish? Think about that this week. The second thing that I want to draw your attention to of where prayer is going to mobilize you into action and please God towards unity in the church. Pray, pray with scripture. Scripture, as St. Jerome said, Ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. And so let us, let us get used to reading scripture a little more. If this sounds too daunting to you, then just read the gospel for today, for, for the day, that whatever day it is. Read the gospel for the day. And when you're reading the gospel, if you want to start edging towards uh, a more active prayer life, watch what Jesus is doing in the gospels. How is he interacting with people? And where might you be in that interaction? Is it something that Jesus is speaking to you? Is it something that Jesus really touched you in how he's interacting with someone else? And it might cause you to think about a current relationship that you have that might need a little more Holy Spirit, a little more healing, a little more peace. Just 
take scripture into prayer every day, I guarantee you it will soften your heart. It will call you deeper into that deep well of beauty that God has for you. And the third thing that I would like to point out based on the teachings for today, exactly what Jesus said about their need to pray always and not lose heart, persevere. Persevere. Now reflect if you, whatever you are doing, whether it is that final push through the semester of uh, your undergrad years, or maybe it was a difficult time at work, or maybe it was a difficult time in your marriage, or your high school, or your sports team, maybe you suffered rejection because you didn't make the team, persevere, persevere in what God has called you to persevere. And I think it would profit you to spend some time reflecting on an opportunity when you actually had to persevere. I know there are grandparents in our parish who are having to persevere as they have, are called into an important role in their grandchildren's lives of, of helping their children raise their, their, their grandchildren. I know there are wives in this parish who are supporting infirmed husbands. I know there are infirmed husbands who are supporting infirmed wives. I know that there are sick people in our parish who are being supported by family and friends. I know this. I know many of us are consumed by sickness and worry and pain. Persevere. Persevere in showing love to those we are called to care for. Persevere in your own prayer life. So perhaps it's a good discipline as you cultivate these spiritual disciplines of prayer and reading with scripture to reflect on a time when you have had to persevere or maybe to reflect on a time when you're persevering now. Persevere, persevere. God will provide, you know, a dear, dear friend of mine um, was down in Haiti after the earthquake and um, the, uh, there was a, uh, an orphanage that was totally destroyed by the earthquake, an orphanage that was full before the earthquake, and it was overwhelmed, of course, afterwards. Not only was their infrastructure destroyed, but there were more orphans coming as a result of the, of the earthquake. And the woman who, lead, who uh, was leading that orphanage just said to my friend who was wondering, like, what are you going to do? She said, God will provide. God always provides. God will provide. Persevere. God will provide. Jesus never once promised that life was going to be easy. He did promise peace. He did promise a peace that surpasses all understanding. Persevere. And I preach this today about unity and prayer and perseverance on a day when the church remembers that it is food, World Food Day. Many in our world, many even in our own community, don't have food to sustain themselves. Many in our parish, our kids are going to school without proper nourishment. So today, as you know, uh, for World Food Day, we're supporting the breakfast program in the local schools. So if you... Thanks, Kevin. If you, um, if you forgot to bring something today, you can easily um, drop an envelope in the basket next week. Just write um, for the uh, food program or something, or bring some food in next week. There's always need for food. You know, I'm reminded of when St. Paul was going in to uh, proclaim the gospel in the Gentile territories. It's uh, near the end of uh, Galatians chapter 3. Peter yells to him, don't forget the poor. Don't forget, let us not forget the poor. There's plenty of need in the world and it feels overwhelming. There's plenty of need inside of our own church. The need feels overwhelming. The problems feel overwhelming at times. But as Jesus says, don't lose heart, persevere. Jesus told the disciples a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. Don't lose heart. God is faithful. God is faithful, God is sovereign, and during this time, this disorienting time in history, my goodness, as I speak to perseverance, I mean, I'm looking at Artem here, who's in here, he, he arrived in our community from Ukraine. I spoke to uh, 
someone earlier in the week who's, who's uh, in from Africa. Persevere, my goodness, when your country is being utterly destroyed by bond. Will you respond with acts of unity in our parish? Will you respond by praying with scripture? Will you remember the poor? Don't lose heart. As Jesus said, we have great need to pray always and not to lose heart. Amen.